Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we're going to talk about the Micro Desert Eagle, a pistol that has no resemblance in any way to the actual Desert Eagle. Before we get into that, I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon. And um, a little foreshadowing here, I'm going to be thanking you in a very material way very soon. So, be on the lookout. I'd also like to thank channel benefactors, like the very nice person that donated this gun, new in box and unfired, to the channel, but does not wish to be named in the video. So, thank you very, very much, and thank you to all of those who have made contributions of ammunition, use of facilities, time, etc., to the channel. Very thankful to you all. So, what we have here is a gas delayed blowback micro 380 with a double action only trigger this gun was originally produced and marketed in europe about 20 years ago roughly as the kevin okay um <laughs> the kevin of course could not be imported to the united states because of the gun control act of 1968 which had provisions to prevent poor people from getting inexpensive guns from Europe. Oh, right, no politics. Sorry. Um, so, Magnum Research, makers of the actual Desert Eagle, um, import, they bought the rights and the plans for this gun and produced a fairly slightly modified version of the gun and it's kind of a unique little thing now it's a good chunk it weighs 13.6 ounces unloaded in 380 acp i'm not all that sure you'd want it to be much lighter but that is not an excessive weight comparable to a j frame smith and wesson with an alloy frame and has the same kind of double action trigger as that weapon which according to the handy dandy lyman trigger gauge pulls at about eight pounds. The trigger pull is quite smooth. And reset, of course, is the full length because it's a double action revolver style trigger. There is an actual hammer, which you can see here, that drops back, does the double action thing. And um, plastic grips, there is a conventional mag of release in the conventional location, which drops the magazines free. This gun also came with two extra magazines, which were purchased after market. So let's go to the tabletop and have a closer look at this. So the gun comes in a very nice hard case with some details on the side, usual stuff. It is lockable and you open it up to see a piece of paper, backing paper, a single fired case indicating that the gun goes bang when you pull the trigger at least once, which was, uh, the shell was collected by Scott Munson. So good work, Scott. There is in fact a case. Space for the magazine. It did not appear to come with the gun. Cleaning stuff. A manual, a CD of Magnum Research's 2009 catalog and photos, and the ubiquitous federally mandated gun lock. And the instruction manual, as you can see, is in color. Never walk alone. Sound advice. NRA ad. and a uh, warranty card, all going right back in the case. Anyway, so the gun itself is kind of interesting because it says it is a gas delayed blowback. Normally that would have gas bled off in front of the chamber into a piston. Obviously, there ain't no room for that here. 
So what it does instead is you have two ports right in front of the chamber that blow hot gas directly onto this face at the front of the ejection port. Honestly, I don't know if that actually accomplishes anything, except you're, uh, when ballistics by the inch tested the gun about 10 years ago, um, they found it was averaging 100 feet per second slower with factory ammo than other guns in its class. Uh, in fairness, this is smaller and has a shorter barrel than most guns in its class. It does feel quite reasonably good in the hand. Let's clear away the dross here. And we will show you how the gun comes apart, which is very simple and rather clever. And harkens back to days of yore with guns like the uh, Colt Vest Pocket and things of that. So on this one, what you do is you have a registration mark here, you have a mark here, which is 380 Auto, and with a vertical mark under it, you line that mark up with this mark, and you can stick something in the ejection port to keep them lined up. But if you've got gorilla fingers, you can just line them up manually. Then you rotate the barrel, and the slide comes off the front of the gun. And you have a full-length steel guide rod. And this is the, uh, oh, hey, and there are two of them. You have two recoil springs with full-length steel guide rods. The barrel has to be rotated back and lifted out somehow. There we go. And there you are. And, uh, Pretty nicely machined inside. Barrel looks like a barrel, remarkably stubby, with two holes in the top to let gas out just ahead of the chamber. And getting it back together, not all that difficult. Really annoyingly difficult. Rotate the barrel back into position and release the slide. I imagine with practice that gets easier. Now, one thing is that this is a one finger grip, unless you use the provided magazine, which has an extension, which gives you a one and a half to two finger grip, which you're going to want. And um, it's a well made little gun, all stainless steel. And uh, yeah. And as you can see in the video, it actually functions pretty well. So, you've already seen me fire the gun. The gun cycles. I've had no malfunctions. What this gun is designed for is close in self-defense, basically to be fired by point shooting at point blank range. So, at three yards, set the target up and just pointed the gun and fired two shots rapidly to see what would happen. Let's have a look at what happened. So as you can see in the video, the gun actually worked pretty well for the three yard point and shoot drills. And um, that's with very little practice on my part. So I imagine with practice, one could get rather good with this. Where the gun does not shine is any sort of shooting for accuracy because the front sight is this nice long shallow ramp, which has uh, sort of token serrations on it. 
And I have yet to find a lighting condition where I can actually see the front sight well enough for it to be useful. Now, for the gun's intended use, that's really not a thing. It doesn't matter. You're going to point at close range, one hand or two hand, and shoot. Gun works pretty good for that. But, as a self-defense pistol, you don't get to decide or pick the circumstances of an engagement. You have to fire this at anything past just a few yards. The fact that that front sight is so hard to pick up is going to be a serious issue, and it's going to cause problems. You are going to lack precision at any kind of range, even seven yards, unless you modify that sight with some fingernail polish or something similar. Whether or not that's an issue for you, that's an individual matter. Myself, I really like to be able to have and useful sights because, as I said, I don't get to choose the terms of engagement. If I got to choose, it would be no engagement. So I would definitely, if I were keeping this gun, I would definitely touch that up with some kind of coloring agent like paint or nail polish or something so that I could actually see that front sight. This is never going to be a tack driver of a gun, but I want to be able to re engage reliably at seven to 10 yards, even though I firmly believe I will never be required to do so. All in all, I think it's a good little gun. I did not expect to like it or for it to be that useful. I was wrong. Now, the first time I fired it, I was not putting my finger far enough on the trigger. And with my trigger here, the edge of the trigger guard would be hammered into my trigger finger quite uncomfortably. Firing with more of a correct grip, I had no such issue. The gun was not at all unpleasant to fire when done correctly. There may be a something to that, doing things right. Who knows? Um, on the whole, I rather like it. Um, I would color the sight in if I were keeping the gun. It's better than I expected it to be. It does what it's supposed to quite well. And, uh, you know, in terms of fit and finish, quality, etc., I, I, I see nothing lacking. Now, these guns are no longer in production in the United States. Um, you can still get them, although prices are going up. And I've seen people asking, but not getting genuinely silly money for these. But uh, yeah, overall, good little pistol. Now, the other caveat is with that loss of 100 feet per second and the very short barrel. Modern defensive ammunition expanding jacketed hollow points from a 380 can be a pretty dubious proposition. Knock 100 feet per second off that, they're not going to expand. So I would, if I were to carry this, I would use it with solids, either full metal case or um, underwood monolithic extreme defenders, which ought to work just fine out of this gun. Special purpose deep concealment pistol, maybe a backup pistol. And I think uh, with a little practice, it could serve very well in that capacity. So thank you to the viewer who contributed this to the channel. Deeply appreciate it. And uh, yeah, you've broadened my horizons and gave me a little bit of a surprise with this one. So that's it for this time. I hope this finds you well. Stay safe. Take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.